everyone welcome back to my channel today we are going to be talking about my 10 tips for incoming interns or new residents this video was inspired by my experiences as an intern and as a resident I wish I would have seen more videos that were encouraging and giving me tips on how to survive because residency is definitely not easy and something that we should have more support and resources available for our residents especially during these hard times I'm going to be sharing you my top 10 tips. Without further ado, let's get started. So tip number one is don't neglect your health. And this is something that is so important, so near and dear to my heart because I have struggled and I have been that person that has neglected my health during this time and I definitely don't recommend that to anybody. Whether it is doing yoga, taking a break, taking a nap, taking a break at work to go eat, taking a break to go to the bathroom, take, do meditation, do anything that makes you feel centered and makes you a healthier person, do those things and remember to take care of your health, both physical, emotional, and mental health. These are all things that can be greatly affected by the long hours that we work, by our lack of sleep, we sometimes don't eat at work, and all of these other things that can make it really hard to get on with your day and keep moving day in, day out, week after week during residency. Another way to take care of your health is to make sure that you are going to your doctor's appointments, to go to your annual exam, go to the dentist, if you need mental health services to take time to go to those, never forget to take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself, you won't be giving your patients the best version of yourself. Tip number two is to develop a support system. This is really important, whether it be your significant other, your parents, your work, your friends from medical school, high school, your friends that you make in residency, friends from other programs within your institution. Just find a support system, people in who you can confide, people who you can vent and talk to when you're feeling frustrated or you're feeling overwhelmed and you feel like you need to let that out. You can also look in to see if your programs have resident assistance program. These are programs that allow you to receive mental health services and this is a good way to receive support. Some programs do give this option to their residents and it's usually free, it's confidential, and your program doesn't even have to know and that you are going if you don't want to. So these are good ways to develop a support system and going back to point one, taking care of your health. Tip number three is to say, I don't know or I need help. These are two very important things, especially for incoming interns. You sometimes feel like you are thrown to the wolves and you don't really know what you're doing. And it's very overwhelming sometimes you have a lot of patience you don't know what to do you are scared you want people to trust you and trust your judgment know that you are doing a good job and that you know what you're doing but at the same time sometimes you will be put in a position where you you've never done that before or you really just don't know how to do it or don't feel comfortable doing it and these are the times that it's very important to go to your upper levels, whether it be a second, third, or fourth year, someone that you trust and feel comfortable with and say, hey, I don't know how to do this, I've never done it before. Can you can you show me how to do it so that I know how to do it next time? Don't wait until you are in over your head to call for help. Be like, hey, I think I might need help with this procedure, can you help me? And never be afraid to say those things. I know some programs have a more toxic culture, they're not really encouraging in that sense, and it can be really hard to feel comfortable saying I don't know or saying I need help, but these are things that are going to keep your patients safe and are going to make those around you and your patients trust you because they know that you are doing your best and when you don't know what you're doing, then they know that you will reach out and they'll trust that you won't put yourself in a position where your inner or your head in a patient's life might be at risk. Tip number four is to be a team player. And I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to be part of a team and to be an encouraging person and an active participant of your team. Always be willing to help those around you. Don't wait to be told that things need to be done. If you know that something needs to be done and you see that your 
coworker is struggling because they are busy and it's something that needs to be done for sign out, just take the lead and do it. Don't even say, hey, I'm gonna help you with this, just do it. And then when they're like, oh my God, I forgot to do this, just be like, hey, don't worry, I already took care of it. Be a team player. Be that person that wants everybody in your team to succeed and achieve their goals and make everybody look good. Don't do things because they'll make you yourself as an individual look good. Do things that are going to make your whole team, everyone who was involved in this team, look good. Make them all be responsible and active participants because especially if you're in a program that has a toxic culture where people only look out for themselves, you are going to be that person that inspires change and makes your program better because when people work in a team, it's better for the patient, it makes your work environment so much better, it makes everything flow and it enhances communication. Be an active team player with your co-resident, with your attendings, with your nurses, with ancillary staff. Just be a team player, be willing to help, put in orders for people who are busy. In, like if you're in obstetrics and gynecology and you know that your coworker is doing a delivery and there's a lot of patients and you're there doing nothing, it doesn't cost you absolutely anything to go and put in their orders. So that when they come back and they have to do their notes and go see another patient, their orders are already in place. You help them. By helping them, you help the patients and you help everybody in your team look good. So remember, be a team player. Tip number five is to always be kind and be polite. I cannot emphasize enough how important this is as well. I am always, or I'm not perfect, but I always strive to be nice and be polite and be kind to everybody because you don't know what other people are going through. Some people may be rude to you one day, but you don't know if they're having a rough time. You don't know if something is going on in their personal life that is making them snap at you. Spread kindness, spread love, be polite. You don't know who you will be working with in the future. You don't know who is gonna be able to give you a letter of recommendation. You want to make a good impression and you wanna try and get along with everybody. This won't always happen because we're human and we won't get along with 100% of the people we come into contact with. But even if someone doesn't rub you the right way, you can still be kind, you can still be polite to them, and you will be known as someone who is always nice and is always a good person and is never rude. This also includes never talking bad about people behind their backs. You don't wanna be that person that starts and spreads gossip in your workplace. You don't want to be the person that they, when you're not there, people are like, oh, oh my god, they are so rude all the time, they only think about themselves, they never say good morning, they don't care about other people, they only care about themselves. You don't want to be that person. You want to be the person that everyone is excited to work with, that people are willing to negotiate with, and people want to work with you because they know that you are a kind and polite person. This also translates to your patients. You always want to be kind and polite to them because you don't know what they are going to learn about and you want to make a good impression and you want to make them feel safe and cared for. Tip number six is to maximize every opportunity and this means in every sense possible. Whether it's by reading a patient encounter that you can learn something from, a someone else's experience, take advantage of everything that you experience during your intern year or during your residency in general. There is no better way to learn than by living an experience. So take everything with the most optimistic approach possible and you will be able to get the most out of that experience. Try to learn more about other aspects of health. Look at all the determined, social determinants of health. Learn about maybe they have this issue because they have a problem at home. Learn about more things. Learn about psychology behind disease. Learn about a little bit about nursing. Learn about intubation. Learn about everything that you possibly can. Maximize every opportunity to 100%. Tip number seven might sound very silly, but sleep when you can. I cannot emphasize this enough. If you are on a 24 hour call and you are suddenly good, you have everything set, you know that you don't have anything else to do for the next two, three hours unless something is an emergency and you're really tired, 
close your eyes and take a nap right at that moment. Because if you say, oh, I'll just wait until a little bit later when I'm more tired to take a nap, I guarantee you that something else will come up and you won't be able to take that nap. Trust me, it has happened to me way more times than I care to admit. The most recent time that I was on call, I was telling my coworkers, so everything looks like it's settling down, everything is in order, all the patients are taken care of, all of my nuts are done, we should take turns taking naps. Well, guess what happened? I waited and waited and then I was like, oh, we should start our nap sessions. All of our patients started delivering at the same time. And then we didn't get a break until sign out. So no one got to sleep. Lesson learned, nap when you can. Tip number eight is a really fun one and is to find a hobby. For me, this is my hobby. Doing videos on YouTube, writing on my blog, posting photos on Instagram. Find something that helps you disconnect from work, makes you feel like a human being, makes you feel like a person. And whenever you're feeling overwhelmed, this is something that's gonna be an outlet for you and makes you feel happy, makes you feel joy, and helps you recharge so that you're ready for the next work day. So find a hobby, reading, shooting, cooking, yoga, whatever it is, find a hobby and do it whenever you have free time. Make time for it because it's gonna help you with point number one, which was don't neglect your health. It's gonna help your physical, emotional, and mental health to have something other than medicine to focus on. Tip number nine is to to find a mentor and this is really important because you sometimes don't know what you want to do don't know how to get to your next goal and someone who is higher than you can serve as a mentor to guide you and give you the tips and tricks that you need to achieve all of your goals. Whether you're thinking of doing fellowship or not, you can have a mentor as someone who can help you with your research, someone who can help you find a hobby, someone who can help you when you're struggling and having a hard time with residency, if you're having an issue with another resident or anything like that, this person can be someone that you trust, someone that you can go to when you have a problem and they can help you solve that problem. So find someone that you trust, someone that inspires you, someone that is in the same career path that you wanna go into. Just find someone to be your mentor, whether your program assigns someone to you or you find one for yourself. They don't necessarily have to be someone in your program. You can find people on social media. There are resources online by AMA or AAMC or other national organizations that allow you to find a mentor in whatever specialty you are in. And tip number 10, final tip is do not dwell. It gets better. When you have a bad day, it can feel like the whole world is crumbling around you. And it can be really overwhelming to go to sleep when you just had a horrible day and then you really don't want to go to work the next day, but you still have to wake up the next day, get your butt to work, get through a whole day of work. Even if you are not feeling up to it, even if you're not feeling 100%, even if you are be you are really overwhelmed. As hard as it is, and again, I'm not perfect, I actually struggle with this point a lot, even as a second year, almost a third year now. Sometimes uh, when I have a bad day, I have a really hard time letting it go and then being very optimistic the next day and taking it as a new day. But it does get better. Everything does get better. Day by day, you will realize how much you are learning, the learning curve is very steep and you will see that you have the capacity to overcome every obstacle in your way whether by yourself or with help or just with time so do not dwell on a bad situation do not dwell on a bad day it does get better trust me even as someone who does struggle with this every day I notice that things do get better and that I feel more confident as time goes on so there you have it guys these are my top 10 tips for new residents and interns please give this video a big thumbs up if you did enjoy it it would really help me with the YouTube algorithm subscribe to my channel if you haven't already hit the notification bell to be notified every time I upload a new video follow me on social media Instagram Twitter Facebook whatever floats your boat follow me there so you can stay up to date on whatever I am doing and thank you so so much for watching I love each and every one of you I will see you all in my next video bye guys but when there's no hope I didn't know chance come